All right, we're, what we're going to try to do this morning, just talk a little bit about pulling pins and, and working with, with cattle and the, the whole behavior aspect of it and how we communicate with cattle to, to get them to do what we want to do without forcing them to do it. And so trying to set it up to be their idea to go somewhere uh, is a whole lot easier than trying to force them to do it and a whole lot safer. And so as we look at what we're trying to do with cattle, we have to focus on how they want us to communicate with them, not necessarily how we normally do things. Uh, cattle, I, I try to use five basic things to get people to think about this. And the first one just, cattle won't be able to see you. Uh, the way they live their life, what they see is what they react to. And so we have to realize that where we position ourselves can affect how they respond to us. So that's the first thing we're gonna try to get done. The second thing is gonna be trying to position ourselves where they have a tendency to want to go around us and we can use that to our advantage or it can be a problem. If you want them to go straight, you don't want them circling us, right? So we got to learn how to keep them straight. Uh, the other one is, and thank goodness, they're a herd animal. So if you get one of them started, the rest of them will follow pretty easy. And so that's going to really come into play as we start pulling pins. Hopefully they'll follow one another out and we don't have to go push them out. Because if you push them out, then you start losing control of the front. And so we start trying to train these cattle to respond to our pressure. And everything we're going to talk about is about pressure and release. No different than training any other animal out there. So we got them, they want to see us, they have a tendency to go around us, they follow one another. Uh, they can only think about one main thought at a time. So we've got to let them realize what we are asking them to do and then respond to that. And so that's a, a big issue. A lot of us don't take the time to give them that split second to figure out what we're really asking them to do. And it's all just force when we, everybody gets in a hurry and everybody goes to force and we're just delaying a slight bit may actually help. So then we're going to get into a situation where we can set our cattle up to succeed. That may sound a little touchy feely, but we don't want to put stress on these cattle. Our whole idea is to get them to perform, gain weight, not get sick, and all those things are affected by stress. And so anything we can do to not get them stressed is important. All right, the other thing in the fifth one is that they want to remove pressure. And so they're no different than any of us. If pressure's out there, they want to get away from pressure. Uh, some of us like working in ag because we can get by ourselves and we don't have to put up with somebody else that's a pain in the rear and that pressure we don't have to have and stress we don't have to have. And that's a really good reason to be in ag actually. You get to work a little bit smaller groups. Cattle are somewhat the same way. So we have to kind of think about what we can do to set them up right. I'm going to pull the second pin out into this alleyway. And then we'll do a little bit of work with them to uh, make sure that I can demonstrate what I'm talking about here. Another great lesson, always latch the gates when you come through. <laughs> and don't leave them just partially closed and not latched. I see people do that all the time, drives me crazy to it. As I go to pull a pin, I'm not going to go in there and try to push the cattle out. I'm going to try to draw them out of there. Feedlot cattle are real easy to draw because they're bored. And so when somebody comes in the pen, they have a tendency to want to come to you. So if they're going to do that anyway, and you can kick the first one out in the alleyway, that starts your draw and your flow. So that allows them to come by you, come around you out of the gate, follow one another, remove that pressure. And so it all sets up those five basic things we just talked about. So every time we move cattle, we want to try to do it to where we elicit that response and draw cattle to you. Even this bud box we're gonna wind up working through is the same thing. We wanna draw cattle out of a bud box. You don't force them out of a bud box, you draw them out of it. There's a lot of sweep tubs that are out there that we think about forcing them. They're actually called forcing pens. I hate that terminology, but that's the official term for them. And that's a forcing sweep gate. We don't wanna use it that way. <coughs> and so we'll look and see what we can do here on getting these cattle to come out. And if they won't come to me, I'm going to force them away from the gate until they want to take the pressure off. 
I have no idea how much pressure it's going to take to either draw them out or force them out. So one way or another, we'll figure out what they want to do. But as I go down here, I'll open the gate, see if they actually will start coming out just one at a time. And if they do, we'll see if the rest of them draw. If they don't, I'll put a little pressure on them to see if they'll come on out. <clears throat> Uh, you already see these cattle are wanting to come to me. And so I'm just going to, if I can draw him out, I'm going to. He's like, I'm not normally allowed to come out of here. But if I can draw these cattle to me, I'm going to do it. If not, I'll have to step in. Now this may be slower than what you want to see, but most feedlot cattle, that's, I'm going to go ahead and step in because they're not going to, they don't think they're supposed to come out either. So now I'm gonna to try to get the Brandle steer to step on out and he'll be my draw. These others won't be able to stand it and they'll go to him. So then all I have to do is get just enough pressure, hopefully, to start our flow out and the faster they leave, the more draw we can create. Now I wanna step back and see if these others will come to him and I never, I probably won't, I'm not gonna say never, but hopefully you don't have to go get the others, but if you do, just push them away. That'll turn them and they'll go their buddies. But by drawing cattle out, you teach them to come by you. Now if he don't wanna go on out, I'm gonna push on an eye and send him out. All right. It's called WD-40, by the way. All right, now this is a great place to, to train on these cattle. Now I want them to come back to me, so I'm just gonna sit here a minute. I want them to learn to come by me. You can do this with young cattle, either way, but I want them to know it's okay to come by me. Now notice they came this way a whole lot easier than they're going that way. That's fine. Do the same thing. I'll send these just like I did pulling the pin. Put pressure on them away from where I want them to go. And I'll use a little bit of sound. Eyesight's what I pro work primarily off of, but sound works fairly well too. All right, now here where it gets a little harder to stop flow, if I want them to stop, I'm actually gonna back up, take pressure off. When cattle come at you, the tendency is to go toward them, but you really have to back off to stop that motion. Now if I wanna draw this calf forward, I can. If I wanna stop him, I step forward and take pressure off. I don't step to him because I want him to keep coming this way. So when I am ready for him, I can let him by or I can stop the next one. See, now he turned back. I'd like to work with him a little better so they don't do that, but. Now see, I keep stepping back to draw him forward. And then I can step up his side and release him. I let that calf go because I, he's going to get to where he won't come by me if I'm not careful. But now I have them drawn to me so I can release them. 
or stop them. Now in this wide alley, sometimes you got to get pretty wide. But this is kind of a fun part, and I like doing this if you've got a chance to work with cattle in an alley. <clears throat> guess where you can sort on them pretty easy? And if they won't come this way, I'm going to push them that way until I get their attention again. Now I can draw him out. If I get that much flow started, I got to be careful. I got to keep backing up to stop it rather than jump in front of it. These big buggers will run over you. I want to draw his eye around. This one's kind of pushy. He still doesn't have the brakes on him I'd like to see, but I've already got my color sort done. Y'all thought I was just goofing around, but I got my black sorted off just by letting them come out very easily. Now that if I wanted the black calf out, keep the two mots, I've got to be able to push on their eye. They help me draw him around, and I can bring him out. So you start using their eye to get them to do what you want to do. Now. If because their steering mechanism is their eye and not their body. So now if I want the mott out, I'll push on the white face one. He can turn the mott to me and I can get him to come out. So see how little you have to do to get them to help you. So it's kind of fun to me to figure out how to use their eyes, their steering mechanism because it's actually pretty easy to do. So we communicate with cattle through their eye, and we push on an eye, we can pull on an eye, and those are our steering mechanisms. If we're in front of them, they can see us out of both eyes, and then we have the ability to direct where they go. Very easy. <coughs> I'll see if I can. I'm gonna try to do something. I'm not sure it's gonna work here. I'll get one of them up here and we'll talk about using that eye. Now right here, I stepped to his hip to try to draw him out a little bit to keep him from going. But I, I didn't want him turning going that way, so I stepped toward his hip to draw that left eye to me. All right. <coughs> So as he comes to back in, I've got to get him where he'll stop. Now if I want him to turn to his right, I'm going to step over here, push on this eye, push on this eye, and turn him to the right. He hadn't switched yet. All right, now he finally switched eyes. Okay? That's hard for cattle to do. If they turn their butt to you, that's when their predator prey mindset comes into play because a predator would get them when they turn their loose side of them right so they don't like turning their butt away from you but here i'm gonna try to he probably won't turn that way very well because the people that are there but i'll try to set him up to do it now here i should be able to push on his right eye and get him to turn away from me so then we get our steering mechanism here I've actually drawn him to me, so I've got to wait. Now I can push on him. Now he's getting how much softer he's getting to turn around. He trusts me a little bit, and he'll let me stop him. Something else, I've been working out in front of these cattle quite a bit. What up, dude? He's trying to figure out why are we doing this. Been there all these months, and nobody's made me do this. But now he's relaxing, seeing him starting to chew. So he's relaxed enough that he can stand there right by me and chew. So if I want to 
I actually get him to turn and go that way again. I got to draw his attention, step over here enough to get his head turned, and then I can turn him back up. Oh, don't do it. Got to be careful. I put too much on him, he's going to blow past me. When he turns, if he turns away from me, I'm putting pressure right behind his ear, really. But when he turns, notice I back off. Because if I stay up there, he's going to come past me. So as soon as he starts to commit, back off and let him pick you up on the other eye. All right. <clears throat> so we've not really talked about flight zone and all of that. So everybody understands. How many of you have seen the diagrams? Of, you know, no, When you get close to an animal, they'll move away from you, right? He didn't have a very big flight zone, did he? So each animal has a different flight zone. And also, some of them have a very different take on how much pressure you're putting on them. So that white calf that kept trying to run by me a while ago, he'd really stress out when we're trying to do that with him. <clears throat> Let me pull another one up here. Now this white calf has a totally different demeanor than the other one did. But he still has the same steering mechanism. He may respond very differently, but he's probably not gonna like being by himself if I sort him by himself. And so as part of our job is to figure out when we can get them sorted or when we need to take something with them. I just want him to learn to stop. And now if I, to release him, all I've got to do is step over here, step toward him and he'll come to me. Okay, so now this old calf, we'll see what he'll do. Now when run, one runs off from the other one, that changes their dynamic as well because you're sorting them away from the herd. All right, now then, flight zone, just the best way to demonstrate it. Oh, there we go. It's fickle, isn't it? The, uh, <clears throat> if I step toward this calf, right now he's, Flight zone's coming at me. All right. Now, what I want to demonstrate here, if I walk toward him, there's going to be a point in time when he'll move. Okay, so when I, he moved away from me and I stopped. So that's my pressure and release. So he was willing to walk on away from me because I quit putting pressure on him. So often we don't do that. We just keep the pressure on and so they don't ever know there's a release when we get in their presence. <coughs> <coughs> so now there's all, three types of pressure we can put on cattle as well. There's a pushing pressure, a drawing pressure, and then we can maintain. I'm kind of maintaining right now because I've come up here and notice he stepped a little further away. But if I put a little more pressure, he's going to turn to me All I gotta do is hold it here, I think. Because if I get too much closer, then I'm gonna be in a bad spot. But if I draw him, see if I draw him back out, that's more effective than going and getting him, isn't it? Got really good draw started now. But by drawing him, I don't have to go push on him. But I hope y'all noticed as I backed off, I drew his head to me, and now I have control on him, I hope. Now, see, I'd step back even a little bit further. Now, when he stops, I've got a chance to push on him and send him on the other way. But until he stops, Going at him is going to create more push coming at you. All right. 
So those kind of demonstrate the basic principles of, of the handling we, we try to work on. And getting these cattle to flow and do the things we need all depend on those basic aspects of it. All right, any questions? Because it's really kind of simple when we talk about we use the eye as our driving mechanism. I don't try to use any sound. I'm over here yammering. See how loud I was talking? Was that really affecting them? Now, what if I went to yelling at them? Would it affect them? Your voice start, has different intents. So if my voice is projected at you all, it doesn't affect the cattle. Y'all have been around classmates that scream and holler all the time, just loud and obnoxious. That classmate may be in this group, I don't know. Y'all were all looking back. No, I'm kidding. But if that's the case, you tune them out, right? It's not, it doesn't affect you. But if they start yelling at you, what does it, that same person can have a different intent, right? So that's always amazing to me. A PA system doesn't affect them. Me screaming at the top of my voice doesn't affect them. But if I go down here and go to screaming at them stupid SOBs, it's gonna affect them, okay? Now notice I also don't use driving aids. I don't have a flag or a paddle or anything else. I'm not saying don't use them, but you have to be very aware of where they're at and how much pressure they're putting out. They put out more pressure than actually your voice a lot of times would do, okay? All right, so we'll go up here. If y'all wanna start circling around, we'll see what we can Four, figure out. I don't out. wanna go behind them. I wanna stay on the front and draw the cattle to me. Now here I might have to put a lot of pressure on them away from where I want them to go to get them started that way. We'll just see. I'm gonna get these two started to try to create a little bit of draw, but if they come back at me, it may actually be worse. Now here I'm gonna add a little noise, cause that adds pressure. Now once I get started, now I've gotta, if you work a big alley like this, you've gotta be pretty careful not to get in one position and just stay there. Because you've got to cover both sides of it and focus on the front, don't focus on the back. I have to keep these cattle going forward. Notice I'm using my hand a little bit as well. We have people up at the alleyway that are changing gates, so I'm waiting. Now here I've got to change all my motion around. I see from behind, that it's interesting, that one person left up there that was in front. And I thought we were good, but they looked up and saw our bucket truck, her bucket. Now all of their pressure is ahead of them. So now I've just got to figure out how I can get them all turned and going back the other way again. We're working on it, but they're all going different directions right now. Now if I can get old Whitey to turn, he's gonna make some movement. But until they all get going the same direction, There is no real movement gonna occur in these cattle. Now, I'm gonna put a lot of pressure on these if I can, or we're getting right to my left and it's not gonna, may not work. And I can't put a whole lot of pressure down here <coughs> because of that panel. But if I do get movement started again, I gotta put more pressure on them here. <laughs> than what that bucket truck puts. So I had to learn to gauge 
how much pressure I had to put on it. 